Being flooded is horrible and one of the worst ways can be through sewage backflowing into a property and yet there seems a real limited knowledge on actually backflow protection and more importantly drainage networks as a whole and when you're considering your site it needs to be holistically so that you can assess everything together. So I wanted to run through some example cases to help you better protect your property from flooding and also as a training exercise to promote thought to make sure that we are looking to defend the property in the best possible way. So for my first case, we're going to have a house and again, forgive my drawing because I am an engineer and not an architect, we'll put a toilet there. And on this house, for the front door, we're going to fit a flood door or a flood barrier. Now, if we weren't to consider backflow, water would bypass through the pipe network and could flow up and out of that toilet. Now, for the first case I'm looking at, it's likely to be a more modern house. So we have a split drainage system. So we have our downpipe here and that flows out as a surface water drain, which makes our life a little bit easier because the toilet flows out into a manhole and then out towards the road, which we've got here. Now, if we're fitting flood barriers to the property as we have, and we've got a manhole here with just one connection coming into it, it's quite simple to defend and we can look to defend anything from flowing backwards along this pipe and up and out the toilet, which means we can defend at this connection here with what's very easy to fit, a push fit non-return valve. So it allows the water to flow out and not back the other way. So we'd fit it here, the toilet could flow out, not back the other way. That coupled with the flood barrier helps water not flow into the house. Now for our second case, it's made slightly more difficult because it's a combined system. So we've got our toilet flowing out of here, into the manhole, but what we also have is a drain here with your kitchen waste flowing in through a 40 millimeter pipe, but also your rainwater flowing into the drain, and then that could flow into this manhole and have a separate connection. So what we need to be careful of is that we protect the 40 millimeter valve, and for those we can get these little waste valves which allow water again to flow out, but not back the other way. You'd slot that there to protect, and it's usually for things like dishwashers, washing machines, sinks, and maybe your toilet sink. And they're quite often fitted inside so that they're not affected by frost. Then we would again need to isolate the connection point of where the toilet or the foul waste is coming into the manhole. We could again do that with a push fit non-return valve, slot it in, very easy, allows the waste to flow out, but not back the other way and helps defend the property from backflow and becomes part of the property flood mitigation scheme. Why it's so important to water test or have a CCTV drainage survey and have a surveyor that really understands the site is if you're looking at this manhole and you simply flush the loo and see water come out of that connection, you might think it's fine just to fit your non-return valve in that connection. However, if you don't understand the drainage for the whole site and you haven't water tested, you might be unaware of the fact that you could have a drain here or a downpipe or here. And actually, it might have been connected in here, in which case your junction your confluence is the far side of this connection. So you'd also have your rainwater flowing in there. Now, if you were to put a non-return valve here, what could actually happen is flood water enter in through this drain, flow in, bypass your non-return valve and flow into the property, which is not what we want. You'd have a head of pressure on the drain, water would flow in up and out the toilet. And if you haven't correctly understood it, you could think that that non-return valve is protecting you. 
And if it's not been designed correctly, situation like this, it won't. Now this leaves you with a few options. The most expensive of which would be to fit another manhole or inspection chamber, the far side of that confluence, in which you would fit what we call a full port non-return valve, which lets water flow out, but not back the other way. You see it open and you'd fit it there, allowing the water to flow through from the toilet and not back the other way. And it would isolate that toilet connection. Now, like I say, that is the most expensive. What you might be able to do, for instance, actually, if your toilet connection, we get rid of that bit there, if your toilet connection, what you might be able to do is if I get rid of this bit here to make it a little bit clearer, is if your toilet connection perhaps came out the back of the wall and ran along, if that pipe is exposed, you might be able to fit an inline non-return valve, which could be a cost-effective way of doing it, defend the toilet and be inobtrusive. Your very last resort in this instance would be to fit something like a toilet bung or a pan seal in the toilet in an attempt to try and stop water coming out of it. You could also still have your waste outlet from sinks, which you'd need a smaller non-return valve for. So that's the first three cases looking at property flood resilience. The further two are going to be considering more boundary or perimeter level protection, which is popular. It can be difficult to obtain the consents, but to promote the thought and make sure we're covering all aspects, I do want to include it. So I'll just uh, give this a clean down. And again, you will have to bear with my drawing, which isn't the best, but I try and make it as clear as possible for you. So what you might have is, once again, your house here or property, it doesn't have to be a house, could be commercial. You could have your doorways into the property and you could have your foul waste connections. The property might have, for instance, a bund around it or perimeter walls. And you might think we're completely safe because we have a driveway barrier keeping this area dry. And if you imagine this area all around is underwater and you're looking to keep this area dry, it can be a very effective way of keeping water out of the house. However, if you don't consider the drainage, you could have water coming up into the site. So what we might have here is an inspection chamber or a manhole connecting some foul waste before the pipe goes out to the road. Now, what you can't do here, or would be a mistake to do, is fit a push fit non-return valve on the inward side, so the side nearest the property of that manhole, because what you would be doing is inviting backflow in to that manhole. And once the water's in the manhole, if you've got a head of pressure outside, it could start to overspill and your defended area very quickly becomes inundated with water. What you need to look to do is defend it on the far side, the side nearest the exit point into the public sewer network. Now, the more old fashioned way of doing it and can still be done, but it does require chopping out sections of the manhole can be to concrete in a full port non-return valve. Again, lets the water flow out, but not back the other way. And you'd fit it to the far side of that manhole. The downside of doing that is when it needs replacing, you have to have civil works done to remove it. It's not easily accessible. A more modern way of doing this is with a newer designed piece of equipment called a WAR stop or WA stop, which would slot into the far side of that manhole and again, allow water to flow out, but not back the other way. And that should slot into the manhole and then screw into place. So it's quite an easy fit 
and it stops water coming into that manhole. Your final option here would be to fit another inspection chamber if you've got space and fit a full port non-return valve into that inspection chamber. Now all of this relies upon assuming these manholes aren't too deep to be inaccessible and they are serviceable. So all of that you really need to be considering when looking at the scheme. So I'll clean this down to give you another example of boundary protection, but this one really highlights why you need to get expert advice at the start, because I've seen too many times the walls are built first and the drainage is an afterthought and the, the drainage actually means the whole scheme won't work. So you've got your lovely property once again, and this is sort of very common on housing estates. So you've got your house, but you've also got neighbouring properties. So it's in a very, very common scenario. It can be admittedly very difficult to obtain the consents for boundary protection if you're not providing compensatory storage. But let's assume you've got the permission. And once again, you think you're safe because you've got walls around the property and you've got your nice driveway barrier, which you hope keeps your house safe. But if you've not understood the drainage, it could go wrong very quickly. So you could have your foul drainage coming out of the property into an inspection chamber or a manhole. But what you might also have, and is very common on modern estates, is you could potentially have neighbouring properties draining through. Now that creates two problems for you. Firstly, because this has multiple properties draining into it, it's then not your manhole. It will be owned by the water authority, in which case to try and put non-return valves in it, you might need consent. But more importantly, you can't block off your neighbor's water connection coming in, in which case water will always flow into this manhole and could potentially flow out and fill your site that you've spent so much money and time and energy trying to defend if you've not considered the drainage. Now, whilst it might be possible to fit a sealed manhole and it might be possible to fit a push fit non-return valve if you've got the right consent, what could be worth bearing in mind is actually whether you'd have been better bringing your, I use a different coloured pen, bringing your perimeter scheme perhaps on the inside of that manhole, whether it's through a raised flower bed or equivalent. It's just food for thought that it's not always simple and if you don't understand the drainage from the outset, it could all come unstuck. And that's why it's so important to consider the site holistically. So whilst we're on that theme of understanding drainage and why it's so important, there are a few other things and thoughts I wanted to share with you. So in a similar, if I wipe this down, in a similar setup as there where you've got shared manholes but on an estate house, you could have depending on the ownership of a block of flats, how flats are owned, whether there's a management company, what the manhole situation is, could potentially on a block of flats, again, have a shared manhole. And if you're the basement flat, things like that need to be considered with actually how you could defend against backflow into your property and what connects where. So it's important to understand it. Now, one thing that you might want to consider, and I'll draw your attention to, is on a commercial property, say you have a warehouse that might have a, a V or lots of V's or a W-shaped roof. And we can make it a bit more lifelike. We'll put some roller shutters at the front. And we'll add a little bit of perspective. So, what you might do is think, we'll put some flood barriers on our roller shutters, protect those. And you might even go to the length of fitting a push fit non-return valve to protect against backflow. However, 
With roofs of this scale, you often have internal downpipes which may connect to internal manholes for roof drainage. And if you're stopping the water from flowing out, you might fit non-return valves thinking you've defended it, the roof water has still got somewhere to go. So it may emerge internally. It might be accepted that a bit of water emerging internally from rainwater is nowhere near as bad as the river water and so that's accepted and you could pump it out. But it's just worth bearing in mind that you don't necessarily want the roof to start collecting too much rainwater because it might leak in in other areas or it might be extra loading on the roof. Another case to consider is potentially if you've got an older property, something like a Victorian property, you might have an interceptor still in the exit manhole. Now a lot of them have been removed but a lot still are in place. And if you've got a system like that, the interceptor may need removing to enable you to fit a non-return valve. Hopefully from this educational and informational video, you can see the importance of recognizing the drainage on a site as one of the first stages. You shouldn't be designing any above ground mitigation until you've identified what sort of case of approach you can have with the drainage network. And it's why it's really important to work with someone who understands the drainage or understands the site holistically with the drainage and actually recommends if water testing isn't conclusive that you might need a drainage survey and being open to that from the outset so that money is spent in the best areas and that the scheme works as best as possible to defend the property from flooding. And of course you're always welcome to contact us and if you found this useful we will try and do more of, more of these videos so don't forget to like and subscribe and share as well.